since we touched on coaching a little bit, uh, Tyler took over midseason, and Golden Guardians had a little bit of a trajectory change after he did. What about Tyler caused that? I don't know if Tyler caused it in the same way, but I think what Tyler's strength is is that he's an excellent facilitator. Um, And so in a lot of ways, I think uh, we went, there was a a pretty big coaching paradigm shift. Loco had a very sort of top-down, discipline-oriented system. He knew he had, uh, one thing I really liked is that he had a strong sense of what he wanted coaches' system to be, and he knew what he wanted out of the players, and he was really good at telling them and having direct conversations with them to get out of it. Um, But it was sort of a singular focus in that sense. Um, Tyler's, Tyler's sort of, paradigm, generally speaking, or system is far more conversational and far more facilitation oriented. And I think it let it let the team explore new kind of play styles and strengths in a way. And I, I do think that led to some success. Impossible to know what would have happened if Loco had stuck around. So in a sense, we're all just speculating. But I think Tyler stepped in under difficult circumstances and did extremely well. And we're really excited to have him back, not just for the next split, but also next year. So special, how does he fit into this equation? So I think one thing that Loco brought that also left when he when Loco left was um, was tremendous knowledge of bot lane and how that lane worked um, and. Um Tyler recognized right away that this was going to be a struggle of his in the middle of the the split last last split that this was that we had lost some some serious expertise and that rounding out that expertise by finding someone who could you know, challenge Tyler, have a pro player perspective, um, you know, push the system strategically, but also bring a lot of bot lane focus and expertise was going to be really important for the offseason. We didn't have to look very far for that, especially was in a player kind of coach role at the academy level. Um, And that role wasn't fitting super well anyway. So it made sense for everybody to just pull him up to the LCS level, let him focus a lot on the bottom lane and getting the most out of Defley and Matt, but also, um, you know, bring a kind of pro player perspective to support and challenge Tyler in in the system going forward. Did he not enjoy Academy because he wanted more of a leadership role or he wanted to be more of a player? I think the industry is not really great yet at figuring out. So the player coach was almost like an owner coach role if you go back far enough. Reggie's owner coach, like Hotshot is owner coach. Those lines I think never sat really well and it was a good evolution for those orgs when they hired proper coaches and kind of, uh, you know, sort of diffused some of the the ambiguous um, authority roles and I think the same thing kind of we fell into that in the same way that especially as a player, he has to spend a lot of time playing to be relevant and consistent as a player, which decreases the amount of time and and that he has available to actually be the kind of mentor coach that he's looking for. And so I just don't think ultimately that role is like an actual existing role. I think we, at least for us, we tried it out and I don't think, I think Expecial did well at it, but I just don't think there's enough space to do both of those things well. Who over the past split do you feel like has grown the most? Uh, I think Matthew definitely grew a ton this past split. Um, first split in the LCS, and he was incredibly raw when we got him relative to where he is now. I think one thing I had no appreciation for, and I, I, I don't blame myself, and I don't know how the public would, the difference in comms between the average academy player and the average LCS player is significant. And you know, when Matthew got here and having listened to our academy comms and other academy comms as we've sort of scouted players and other things, they academy players don't know what to tell you. So they're either telling you nothing or they're giving you information you don't need. And so it's difficult for them to figure out how to contribute to an LCS organization when they get there. Beyond simply needing to like level up their actual play, leveling up their ability to contribute to the team more broadly, um, you know, there's a big there's a big jump. And I think it's part of why Academy players often struggle when they first get to the LCS. There are occasional home runs, but those guys are outliers or they come into a team with such a strong existing paradigm that they can just sort of fold right in. We didn't have that. Everything was new. And despite highs like extremely strong and singular voice. Um, It took the other players a little while to figure out how to get into there, and Matthew probably more than any of them. So I think he came in as definitely our rawest player, like our one clear rookie, but came out having carried some significant games, finding his voice within sort of the communication system that the team has set up, and going forward, right, like clear leadership goals that we're putting on him uh, for how he can turn himself into the player that he wants to be and the player that we want him to be. Uh, When I had interviewed Kirk back in preseason, he had said that what partially what impressed him about High was he had ideas about things outside the game, that he was very forward thinking. I know he's looking forward to the death of the gaming house. Is there anything, any ideology that he left with you guys? Um, I don't know about ideology specifically, although I think what I would say is 
Hi pushed us to move faster. I knew this was a startup from being in esports, but nonetheless, the pace of sort of team house life and the kind of ramp up speed that we needed to move at definitely surprised me um, and surprised the organization. And Hi was really good at telling us like, hey, this thing matters. These other things don't matter, but like you really should fix this right now. Um, and I think one thing he's going to be excellent at wherever he goes is that he'll he'll continue that drive that made him successful as a pro player. It's going to make him successful everywhere else. And so while I don't know that that's an ideology in the same way, I think the pace and urgency that came from his expertise and experience in esports was was incredibly valuable to us as we set this all up. How much infrastructure for, for you and the other new teams is still happening as the split goes on? Incredibly active time, for sure. Uh, we are, I mean, we have open job recs. Everyone, please apply. Um, but, you know, we we went into this uh, off-season looking to hire, like, a video producer kind of main content director role um, to hire a chef to come in and kind of upgrade what was sort of a catering um, and, you know, sort of spot solution um, into something that's that's more consistent and sort of full-time presence. Um, you know, we are – we're probably going to add at least one more coach. I don't know if we have a formal job rec up yet, but it's out there. We're, we're looking to probably hire a second manager. Like, there is a bunch of things going on just on the League of Legends side, and, you know, as we have a 2K team and the organization broadens out and to be in multiple games, um, we have a lot of things that we need to do. Um, and I definitely think like uh, we had to hit the ground running in a very short amount of time that forced us into turnkey solutions like team houses and other things that while are not our deal and forward looking and we want to get out of as soon as we can, you kind of take the good with the bad given the timeline. We caught our breath some between the splits and you know we have our eye on 2019 and 2020 and we're hiring uh, as fast as we reasonably can to hit some of those goals. Do you feel like the, the new organization specifically needed more time before the season started? I mean, it's hard to say that when two of the new organizations finished second and fourth at the end of the first spring split. It definitely, the, from a business standpoint, there is no doubt that more time would have been incredibly helpful. Um, you know, and I think even some of the solutions that we put in place would have been better, right, on the competitive side if there was more time. Even the endemic teams probably would have benefited from knowing who the new teams were going to be further in advance and, and getting to know those owners and sort of letting the offseason have a little bit more time to breathe. It was probably going to be a feeding frenzy either way this past offseason, but the pressure was increased tremendously when suddenly everybody had a month before players were due in house. It's Thanksgiving and you're working night and day to try to get all of this stuff done. So, um, you know, that being said, again, two of the four new teams did extremely well. Uh, clearly but even so, uh, Clutch is still hiring content people. Uh, they're still working on analysts even and hiring coaches. 100 Thieves kind of exploded on the content but that was their sort of specialty. Yeah, but for sure. even they are looking for people. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I, th I, there's no doubt if you gave me three more months, we would have had a chef at the start of the split. We might not even be in the team house situation at all. Like we would have we would have been able to support and explore more robust solutions that are more in keeping with our long-term plans. Um, and in everyone's sponsor conversations would have been three months further along and all of those kinds of things. So yes, more time, always good, always good. So I recently got to talk to um, Rick Fox, Nate Shot, as well as Steve, um, about the sort of first split of franchising. And I had asked about, you know, organizations like Golden Guardians and Optic, sort of the, the two new guys who have been struggling a bit. And their main answer was, like, honestly, first split, like, don't care. It's hyper developmental right now. So as the person in that position, can you talk to us a little bit about why people shouldn't be too worried or what's going to change? Yeah, so I, I hope what changes is our results are better, not necessarily like our paradigm or methodology for getting results changes. Um, it's absolutely one split in, you know, and everybody got into this whole kind of permanent partnership franchise model for the long term. And so, you know, we're building from the for the long term from, from the beginning, and we hope that that pays, you know, starts paying off in summer split, or it, it would have been great if it had started paying off right away, right? But, uh, but uh, you know, we're, we're bound to think it's it's going to, going to succeed. We're, our sort of development model is similar to the way the Warriors built success at the NBA level. And I think that model works, and it's clearly working in basketball. And you can see it not only with them, but the Spurs and other things. You can build a, a cultural core um, that is the kind of the underpinnings of your success, and that can drive success over the long term. And I think that's still true for us. How quickly that happens, I don't know. Or am I doing that particularly well so far? Maybe not, right? I think, you know, uh, it's, it's new. Like, I have to grow and develop as much as anybody else. The organization has to grow and develop as much um, as any individual player does, and that's something we're all working on. It's one one split in. Um, 
not that the not that the results or the table is going to flip upside down where we you know optic and and us are at, at the top and everybody else is you know at the bottom or whatever but there's a long way to go in three years from now you know if our plan works out and other things and we're winning I think it's all it's all fine um, we all ex expect and hope league's going to be around for years and years and years right and this is the start of you know I think what Riot has said like a multi-generational um, eSport right and someday I'll be teaching my kids about you know League of Legends and we'll grow up and all this stuff. Who knows if any of that's true? But if it is true, and we're all planning as if it is and sort of building around that, there's time. There's time to do some of this stuff right. There's time to invest in players and let them develop. There's time to take risks um, on young talent that is unproven and put them in situations where, where maybe we get the best out of them or maybe we don't. Um, and we want to be an organization that at least takes advantage of that time and, uh, and, and invests in those guys.